Hello guys, in this class, now let's talk about the functions of the lower limb as well as how weight is transmitted in the lower limb. How is weight transmitted? What's the transmission of weight? This will be our lesson 5. Now, if you say you understand that, first of all, what's the function of the lower limb? Among the functions of the lower limb, there are two major functions of the lower limb. Number one, take note that the lower limb helps to support the body weight. We'll talk about supporting of the body with what should come to your mind the lower limb because all the weight of the body are hinged in the lower limb. Let's say, for example, as a 50 kg man or a 48 kg man or a 70 kg, the lower limb bears the weight of the body. The second function is that the lower limb helps for what? For locomotion. It helps for what? For locomotion. You can move about because of the lower limb. You can move from one place to another. So, everybody, what are the functions of the lower limb? Number one, it helps to support the body weight and number two, it helps for what for the motion. Now, if you say you understand this, the big question is how is weight transmitted in the body? What is transmission of weight? Because we said that the lower limb helps to support the, what, the body weight. Now, what are the bits? A complete series of classes in anatomy, all of them, physiology, all the physiology, biochemistry, all. They are available in the LearnLift app. So just head down to Play Store or App Store and type LearnLift, right? And then download the app and you have access to all your classes and the continuation of this lesson you are watching right now. For the now, peace out. Transmission of body weight. Now, quickly, everybody. One thing about all these classes is that first, all eyes on the diagram. Now, what can you see? The red arrow is giving us an indication of how the body weight is being transmitted. So let's say this man, let's say this man is a 50 kilogram man. Now look at it. The 50 kg weight moves downward through the world. It starts from the vertebral column. So take note that all the weight of the human or all the weight of the body is hinged at the vertebral column. Of course, you should know the vertebral column, right? From the cervical to the thoracic to the lumbar to the sacra and then to the coccyx. So the weight is coming down from the world from the vertebral column. Now from the vertebral column, the first place the weight is going to is where we call, look at it from the vertebral column. So let's call this one. From the vertebral column, the weight is being moved to what we call the word the sacroiliac joint. Of course, we said that the sacroiliac joint is a joint that is formed midway between the sacrum and the iliac or the ilium. So that joint is what we call the word the sacroiliac joint. So you can see the red line. So the weight is coming down, is moving towards the what the sacroiliac joint. Are you seeing that? Now it's now going to spread within the two limbs. So it's coming down and it's spreading towards what the two limbs. Now, from the sacroiliac joint, where is it going to? It's going to spread within the gate. That's how I would say first of all, it's coming from the follow me, it's coming from the vertebral column. The weight goes to the sacroiliac joint. From the sacroiliac joint, it's now going to spread between the two, it's going to spread within the gidus because now it's moving towards the what the lower limb. So from the sacroiliac joint, which is number two, is going to move towards the world, the hip joint. You can see bit, bit both hip joints. So this is, let's say, in joint one, this is in joint two. Are you seeing that? So the way it starts from the vertebral column to the sacroiliac joint is going to spread within the girdles, both moving to both sides of the limbs. From the sacroiliac joint is going towards to the hip joint. From the hip joint is going to continue and move towards the world number four, towards the world femur. So this is three. So vertebral column, to sacroiliac joint, from sacroiliac joint is spread within the gedus and goes to the word to the hip joint, from the hip joint to the word perifemur. Do you understand? This is weight transmission. Everybody, eyes weight transmitted. We said the weight starts from the word from the vertebral column and it's going to move down to the word to the sacroiliac joint and it's going to spread within the word the pelvic gedu. From the pelvic gedu, it's going to move to the word to the hip joint. From the hip joint, it's going to move towards the word the femur. Please, do you understand the transmission of body weight? We started from the vertebral column, how the weight is hinged at the vertebral column. From the vertebral column to the sacroiliac joint, and it's going to spread within the gedus. From the gedus, it goes to the hip joint, and from the hip joint, it goes to the world, to the femur. Now, listen to me. Take note that the two femurs are not straight. The two femurs are oblique. The reason why they are oblique is to support the body weight. Now, let's get the diagram for that. You can see that this, of course, this is where we call the word, this is the femur. Are you seeing that? So, two femurs. So, you can see that the femurs are not straight. They are in an oblique position. Why are they in an oblique position? To support the world, the body weight. So, we said that to support the erect posture, are you seeing that? The femurs are said to be what? To be oblique. Erect posture, the femurs are said to be what? To be oblique. To support the erect posture of the body, effectively, 
the famous has said the reward to be. Now, if you say you understand that, take note that we said that the weight is transmitted from the vertebral column. After the vertebral column is going to go to the sacroiliac joint, right? From the sacroiliac joint, the weight is going to spread within the world, the gedus, and from the gedus is going to move toward the hip joint, and from the hip joint to the femur. Now, this is the femur. What part of the femur is this? This is the distal femur. You can see that from the distal femur, this is the distal femur. Now, this is called the lateral condyle. This is the medial condyle of the femur. So the weight is going to continue through to the femur. From the femur, it's going to move through the wall to the patella bone. Patella bone is also called the what? The knee bone. We said that the patella, constant FCQ question, is the largest sigmoid bone. They can everyone asking, why, why is it constant question? So from the distal femur, it moves to the what? To the patella. From the patella, it's going to move towards the what? The shin bone, also called the what? The tibia. Now, take note that the weight does not have any attachment or any connection to the wall to the fibula. Who can tell me why? Because the fibula is attached to the wall to the tibia and not to the wall to the femur. Because the, the fibula is not attached directly to the femur, the weight does not move to the wall to the tibia. It only moves from the distal femur to the patella. From the patella, it goes to the wall to the tibia. Do you understand that? From the distal femur, it moves to the patella, which is the kneecap. From the kneecap, it goes to the word to the tibia. It has no business to the word fibula. Now look at it. We said that from the femur, the weight is now transferred to where? The knee joint. What forms the knee joint? The knee joint is formed by the distal femur, the patella, and the upper, uh, upper tibia, right? So from that point, it moves to the word to the knee joint. From the knee joint, it now moves to the word to the tibia. We now said note that the fibula does not articulate. The fibula does not articulate to the word to the femur. Hence, does not transfer what any weight. So the fibula does not transfer any weight. The weight moves to the distal femur. From the distal femur, it goes to the patella and moves to the word to the tibia. Do you understand that? If you now say you understand that, take note that from the from the tibia. How is the weight now distributed down? The weight now moves from the tibia and moves down to what we call the heel bone. Look at it. What the heel bone called? It is called the word the calcaneus. So the bone move, the weight moves from the tibia and then to the word to the calcaneus. And from the calcaneus, the weight is now spread towards the word the, the metatarsals. So let's call this meta. Tassas. The head of the world of the metatarsals. Are you seeing that? We said that it moved from the from the distal femur, it moved to the knee joint. From the knee joint, it goes to the tibia. From the tibia, the weight is going to move from the tibia, the weight is going to move towards the what? The calcaneus, also called the word the heel bone. From the calcaneus, this weight is now going to move towards the what? The head of the word of the metatarsals. Do you understand that? So let's put that into writing. We said it's now going to move from the word from the tibia to the word to the calcaneus, also called the heel bone. And from there, it's going to move to the metatarsals. Now, I know you said the metatarsals are five. Are ah, they six? I'm going to explain that. The metatarsals are six pillars. I'll tell you why we said six pillars of the metatarsals. Because we know that the metatarsals are five. From our analogy, we said that the phalanges are 14, metatarsals are five, and the tarsals are seven. So why are we saying six metatarsals? I'm going to explain that. But do you understand this question on the body weight? Now, give me from the vertebral column. From the vertebral column, it goes where? From the vertebral column, it goes to the sacroiliac joint. From the sacroiliac joint, it spreads within the ghetto, right? And goes to the hip joint. From the hip joint, it's going to go towards the femur. From the femur, it's going to move towards the knee joint. A bit. From the knee joint, it's going to be passed to the wall, to the tibia. From the tibia, it will go to the wall, to the heel bone, called the wall, the calcaneus. From the calcaneus, it's now going to spread within the wall, the metatarsals. They are the head of the wall, metatarsals. Now, look at it now. How is the metatarsals having six uh, pillars? We said, look at the diagram. We said that what is the big two called? The big two is called the word the halos. Right? Why the small two is called the minimum or the quinty. Now look at it. We said the weight is distributed in the foot. Look at it. It moves to the water, to the calcaneus. This is the calcaneus. They can ask you what are the two parts of weight distribution in the foot. It is in the words the calcaneus. Where the calcaneus, the medial process of the calcaneus, as well as the word the six pillars of the metatarsals. How are the six pillars? Look at it. First, we have the head of the four lateral pillars. Look at it. The, the brick tool, which is called the halos, has two sisymoid bone. Look at from the diagram. These two 
this one and two belongs to the world to the great two. So there are two sesamoid bones from the head of the metatarsals. Those sesamoid bones belong to the world to the great two. While the rest are the what are the four lateral one, two, three, four that is coming from the rest four digits. So we said this is so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Four are coming from the digits, but the great two, the head of the metatarsals of the great two have two sesamoid bones. All people will say patella is a sesamoid bone. Take note about that. But the largest sesamoid bone is the patella, but the other sesamoid bone in the lower leg. So that is why we say we have what six pillars of the metatarsals. Two is coming from the what from the uh, head of the metatarsals of the green two, while the others are from the word from it. Do you understand? Everybody, what are the weight bearing points in the foot? Very quickly, when it comes to creating accounts, how do you create an account? Very easy. Let me give you the steps. First and foremost, you say create account and login. You only log in right when you already have an account. Since you don't have an account, click, click on create account. When you get there, put in your phone number. Put in your phone number. After putting in your phone number, you click on continue, right? Your first name, of course, you put in your first name there. If your first name is James, you put in James as your first name. Your last name, if your last name is Victor, you put in what? Victor as your last name. Then you come to email address, right? Put in your email address there very quickly. James112 at gmail.com at gmail.com Then your password, right? Oh yes. Those of you that like, if you want to use your name, your password can just be like six digits, right? Oh yes. So let me say James 12th. James 12th as the password, right? Fill everything accurately and correctly. James 12. Don't jump any stage. If not, your account is not going to open for you. Select education. Under select education, of course, university. You click university. Leave secondary, primary. Leave the others. Click university or tertiary. Click it. Come to select level. Under select level, you go and select your level. If it's 100 level, 200 level, of course, all these are the university classes. Click on 200 level. And click on create account. Once you click on create account, what will happen? Your class will load straight and then your profile will be set up and then it will take you towards to class. Easy and direct. So you see it. This is how you create your account. And then from here, you can see that you have your anatomy here, your upper limb, your lower limb, separately embryology, histology, systemic anatomy. Those ones are for nursing. Your CVS, cardiovascular system, your blood physiology, excitable tissues, systemic physiology, intro to biochemistry, your bowel molecules, BCM for nursing, nursing psychology. You have access to every single thing in the app. Now, let me see what is in the app. Let's say, for example, upper limb. You click on the upper limb, right? You can see that you have your classes there already waiting for you. Overview of the upper limb, pectoral region, arm region, forearm, hand, all of them, part by part. When I click on the overview, of the upper limb, of course, I'll just match it straight to my class. Parts of the upper limb, one part of the upper limb, two bone of, bones of the upper limb, joints of the upper limb, muscles. You see, all your classes are there for you, right? Okay, let me say I want to start now and then I want to watch joints of the upper limb. All you just need to do is click on that particular class that you want to watch, joints of the upper limb. And what will happen? Your class will learn and your classes will start playing for you immediately. Shall you see? You may choose to say, okay, I want to rotate it, right? Oh, yes, rotate it. And you start following your classes immediately, easy and direct. You may choose to say, okay, you want to forward, you want to pause, you want to back and um, back forward, any way you want to do. And you take it forward and what happened, you can see all of them very, very easy. And the sweet part is that there are questions for you at the end of every class. Are you with me? So that's for that. And you may choose to go back and then go to the notes section of the app. Oh, yes. When you get to the notes section of the app, of course, the notes are there. Mm -hmm. Well organized and arranged for you. And you can zoom in and then start following back to back. And you are following. You may even choose to go and start answering questions. Questions are there for you. And there are answers. You start um, following through every singular facet of it. And you are learning on your own. And there is... CPT in the app as well for you, a lot of other aspects that you can follow up. All of this in the Learn Lift app. Same way you have for anatomy, 
That's how you have for physiology. That's how you have for biochemistry. And you're getting it now. For the now, bye-bye. The calcaneus, which aspect of the calcaneus, the media process of the calcaneus, and the cis metatarsus. Now, wait for that to say, and note that the weight-bearing point on the foot, the weight-bearing point in the foot are, number one, we said the media process of the work of the calcaneus, and number two, the cis metatarsus. What are the cis metatarsus? How are they formed? They are formed by the word, by the head of the four lateral metatarsus. Head of the four lateral metatarsus. And what? Two sesamoid bones of the world of the great toe. The two sesamoid bones from the great toe. While the four others are giving what? Uh, are giving one each. Making him to have what? Six. Do you understand the bone? The weight distribution in the foot? Everybody close your eye. Tell me the weight distribution generally. Number one. We said it starts from the what? From the vertebral column. Right? After the vertebral column, where does it go to? It go to the sacroiliac joint. It spreads within the pelvic gedu, going to the two limbs. From there, it goes to the hip joint. From the hip joint, it goes to the femur. From the femur to the knee joint. It's fibula parts there. No, fibula does not have attachment to the word to the femur. So from the tibia, from the knee joint, it goes to the tibia. From the tibia, it now goes to the word to the foot. Where in the foot, the calcaneus and the cis metatarsus are you with me? Now, if you say you understand that, let's say, for example, a guy is having a weight of 48 gram. So let's see how the 48 gram is distributed. The 48 gram moves to the vertebral column. This is the weight of the guy. It now spreads to, to both limbs. So one limb, remember you have two limbs, right and left. The one limb is going to carry 24. The other limb is going to carry 24. How is this 24 spread? This 24 is going to come down. 12, we go to the media process of the calcaneus. You can see 12 going to the media process of the calcaneus. Why each pillar of the metatarsus is going to take two. So that would be what 12. So this 12 plus this 12 is going to give what 24. That's how it is distributed. Look at it. 48 is going to run down and it's going to divide into 24, 24. That 24 will go straight and go straight to the what? To the foot. The weight is going to follow. The 24 will follow. That means at the femur, it is 24. At the tibia, it is 24. When it gets to the leg, 12 will go to the what? To the calcaneus. And 12 will go to the 12 pillars so that the leg will be what the, the body weight will be what to be balanced. Are you seeing that? Do you understand that? Look at it. We said that the body weight of a person weighing 48, when standing is reputed as follows 24 kg goes to each limb. You can see that the guy is 48, 24 will go to each limb. I will now say in each limb, 24 goes to the media process of the word calcaneus. Why 12 go to the word metatarsus? We are each tarsus, each metatarsus is going to share what to cage. That is how the weight is what distributed. Do you understand? This is everything about the functions of the lower. Now, if you say you understand that quickly, don't forget to run through the notes, practice the CBT questions, and always tell a friend about the word. The next thing to now do is that in our next class, we have talked about the of the regions. Are you seeing that? We we'll now go further to talk about the muscles of the word of the lower. Limb. And that is going to be our lesson six. Well, that class go choke. I want you to prepare and come from that for the class before you watch the class because we're going to learn all the most of the learning. The reason why we are learning that is just to give us an overview because when we get to each region, we we'll still learn the muscles. But when you have known the muscles before, the next time you are seeing them, you just say what in revision. So next class, we'll talk about the regions of the, uh, the muscles of the world. We'll talk about the gluteal muscle, the gluteal mini muscle, the piriformis muscle, the superior gemini, the filo gemini. We're going to talk about obturator muscles, all and all the gastronomians, the the popliteus muscles, the solis muscles. I'll see you in that class. But for now, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the Learn Lift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.